the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So this minister of 40 years uh, finally uh, meets his maker, and he is in line in the uh, sorting room of heaven and realizes that uh, ahead of him at a higher spot uh, is a taxi driver. And, uh, not trying to be too presumptuous, he does pull Peter aside and says to him, you know, I went to seminary and studied God for years. I was a pastor for 40-something years. I'm just wondering whether I'm really supposed to be uh, in a place kind of beneath the taxi driver over there. Uh, Peter says we're kind of results-oriented here, and um, I just have to ask you, what, what was the general effect of most of your sermons on Sunday morning? And he said, well, if I had, had to be honest, there were a lot of glazed over eyes and people half asleep. Uh, I just said, yes. And then that taxi cab driver incited more prayer than just about anyone. <laughs> a straight on reading of today's gospel is clearly about prayer and the need to have confidence in prayer, to pray fervently, to pray with the kind of desperation uh, that a widow, remember the widow uh, is probably one of the uh, most vulnerable people in society in that first century. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of means uh, for, for her providing for herself. So an unjust judge not granting her justice uh, would, would leave her incredibly vulnerable. And so she never gives up. She is relentless. We're called to be the same way. That we're called to pray with the confidence that God is not just listening, uh, but that by praying we bend our lives, our faith, our being towards that God. And that we open our eyes widely towards the possibility of that God working in our lives. And in the parable, the unjust judge, who really doesn't care at all about the widow, uh, is really just trying to get the widow out of her, his way so he doesn't have to be bothered by it, so he won't get nagged any further, <clears throat> grants some uh, minuscule amount of justice to get her off his hands. Just think about God. Think about how much God loves you. Think about everything you understand about God. How much more would God hear and respond to your prayer? Faith that your fervent prayers, that your deep commitment to prayer will be heard by the same God whose property is always to have mercy, whose nature is, is love, who made you in God's own image, and trust in it. There's an interesting story of a missionary uh, who was uh, uh, over uh, traveling uh, halfway around the world. Uh, and as he was traveling, he came across somebody who was deeply wounded and uh, he cared for him. Uh, and the person wounded happened to realize uh, that the missionary often carried all his possessions on his back. And so uh, he was uh, plotting with his friends that uh, uh, this foolish missionary doesn't really understand the culture here. We can take full advantage of him. We'll go and we'll beat him and we'll take all of his possessions. Uh, and the story goes that when the, uh, uh, the, the bandit who had been taken care of by the missionary gets there, uh, he sees this apparition of 26 uh, soldiers uh, guarding this man. And he later tells him, he said, you know, I feel horrible about this. I know you helped me, uh, but I, uh, I was desperate, and uh, uh, a group of friends and I, we were going to rob you of everything you had and, 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 and beat you to the, uh, the, to the inch of, of your life. Uh, and he said, but we noticed 27 guards protecting you. And he said, there was nobody protecting me. I was all by myself. Uh, but when he got home, uh, he was talking to his congregation uh, and they talked about how they all gathered that night, 26 of them, uh, to pray uh, for, the, for their priest who was on uh, this journey. And I, I thought as I read that story about when we're on our mission trip uh, and how we can visibly uh, and palpably feel the prayers from this congregation from several states away. Uh, and how when I'm inside hospital rooms, people tell me, I know you all are praying for me because I feel it. Uh, I feel it. There is an energy uh, and uh, when we pray in confidence. Uh, there is a connection that's made. Uh, but I struggle whenever a parable is that easy to take care of. I mean, that wrapped up pretty tidy, didn't it? Uh, and Jesus doesn't do that. And nothing gets me more fired up than when the parable starts off. Jesus told a parable about praying fervently and trusting in God. It pretty much leads me to think that the parable is probably not just about that. 
Jesus would never tie it up that neatly because 2,000 years later we wouldn't be wrestling it. And I firmly believe what Timothy has to say about how we use Scripture, how Scripture begins to define our lives, our, our, our morality, uh, our character, our, our sense of being, why we were put into this world, uh, how we're called to serve. And the more deeply we dig into Scripture, uh, the more deeply we find out what we are to be in the world. Uh, and I think that that's kind of a cursory look at that uh, parable, which is probably what the parable means, but, uh, but indulge me a little. So that parable is set between two other parables. One parable that we heard last week about the ten lepers who were healed. And the only leper uh, that falls to Jesus' feet and says thank you is the one who isn't beholden by the law. The other nine realize that the only way that they'll be restored to the people that they love, the only way they'll be able to go home is if a priest designates them as clean and allows them to go home. And so the first thing on their mind uh, is going through all of the, the wickets so that they can get home. Uh, the one who isn't beholden to the law uh, responds viscerally with the gratitude of, uh, of the gift of being healed. Uh, and then next week, uh, we will have uh, the Pharisee and the tax collector as they're praying. Uh, and the Pharisee being so, uh, uh, so confident, so arrogant uh, to say, I'm so glad that I have nothing uh, separating me from God. My perfection uh, uh, binds me so much more closely to God than this poor publican who's, uh, who's hardly worth the air that he's breathing. Uh, and we see three different examples uh, between those two and the unjust judge of when the church misses the mark. We see when the church that's supposed to be the vehicle that affirms the nature of God, that affirms the very character of God, the God that is the righteous judge, the, the God that does love us and is filled with mercy and is constantly reaching out to us. When the church fails to do that, when the church acts uh, uh, without gratitude, when the church dismisses the vulnerable and disenfranchised, and when the church looks down its nose at somebody else and says they're less than, then we do lose faith. And those, especially the, the vulnerable, don't see God in the nature of God as God is. And that's one of the greatest misdeeds that we can do as a church, is to misrepresent God. Because then they do lose faith. And then they do lose the ability to pray fervently to a God that they trust. Because the church is like and then finally, that last line, I think, turns it upside down. We think that we are supposed to be knocking fervently on God's door. But maybe at the end, we're reminded that God is knocking fervently at our door. That it is God that's knocking on our door, begging us to open up. To realize God in our lives and realize our mission, our general purpose. To be the righteous judge to the widow. To be the healer, to be the agent of God's grace and God's goodness. So when I hear this parable, I hear all three stories. Trust in prayer. Trust in the God that you pray to. Realize that we are God's ambassador in the world and the people's faith in God, their ability to trust in God, come from the way that we represent God to the world. And three, realize that God is knocking on our door. And the more that we open that door up wide, the more that we'll see God in the world, the more that our trust will grow, grow, and the more that those who depend on us to represent God will see God in their lives. Amen.